Hello, friends. You like these posters? They're pretty cool, and they're not going to last forever. Check them out in the description. Use the code on screen. Yeah, you guys know the drill. When the dead rise, there's a need for fancy gadgets and gizmos to return them to their place. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Call of Duty Zombies weapons. For this list, we're delving into the various That's why Jesus doesn't want to come back. Call of Duty franchises <laughs> Somebody made this. Zombies. Speaking of this danger to society, Rabbit made a very similar video to this a while ago, but he went over the statistics. How good each one weapon is at taking you to a high Round. If that is the approach you would like, I'm going to leave his link to that video in the description so you can check out that. If you're not into the whole numbers thing, like me, if you get bored of that shit, you find the right place. Let me catch y'all in the fucking trenches, boys. If I catch you in the trenches, you're gonna get fucked up. We can't talk about Wonder Weapons without talking about the most iconic of them all. It also happens to be the very first one introduced to the game mode. Ladies and gentlemen, our good old friend... Ray. Way more often than not, when spinning the mystery box, you got some bum-ass, boring-ass standard bullet weapon. But every now and then, you got your hands on the ray gun, which at the time, frankly, was otherworldly. There was not a comparison. It was the only Wonder Weapon. It was the first Wonder Weapon. It laid out the rubric for what Wonder Weapons should be going forward. It's a small gun, but since when has size ever mattered? And although you can hurt yourself with a splash damage, the bottom line is this gun had the highest damage output of any gun in the game, and it wasn't even close, making it numero uno. The ray gun was so good, its debut was so successful that it would appear on, and let me emphasize this without exaggeration, Every single Treyarch Ether Zombies map going forward. So other than the four Chaos maps in BO4, the ray gun would appear on literally every map ever. In World of War, since there were so few viable gun options, the ray gun really shined. And in Black Ops 1, with the addition of PhD Flopper, which negated the ray gun's number one problem, splash damage, it got even better. The gun was increasing with value over time until we hit Black Ops 2. That's when we see the end of the Reagan's grace period. Not only was PhD Flopper discontinued, but more and more Wonder Weapons were being added to the game, and frankly, they were significantly better than the Ray Gun. It was simply being outclassed, outperformed by its peers. The Ray Gun, as time went on, began to be perceived more and more as a secondary Wonder Weapon. Relative to bullet weapons, the Ray Gun was still a phenomenal pickup, but would only be used until you picked up the bigger and better Wonder Weapon that followed. If you thought things couldn't get worse for old Ray, you are sadly mistaken. Black Ops 3 rolls around. Not only are the Wonder Weapons significantly better, but you can double pack a bunch of guns, which is pretty much the equivalent of having an infinite damage Wonder Weapon. You could literally pack a punch the gun you spawn in with, or one of the first wall guns in the game. As long as you have an AAT on it, as long as you double pack a bunch of gun, it's better than the Ray Gun. Great! We're at an all-time low! The same sad and tragic story can be told about Black Ops 4 as well. It definitely didn't get any better in this game. In fact, it probably got worse. Until, all of a sudden, abruptly in Cold War, they decided to totally flip the script and make it the best one weapon in the game. When you upgrade the ray gun, you get the Porter's X2 ray gun, which is largely the exact same thing, of course. Increased ammo, increased damage, like all guns. Nothing crazy, though. Its popularity more than anything else is what makes it such an iconic weapon. It is the juggernaut of perks. The hellhound of boss zombies. We've also seen it change drastically over the years. It took such a hard fall only to rise up again suddenly at the very end. What the ray gun lacks in power, it makes up for in memes. Survive me, I'm the ray gun, man. I got the ray gun, dude. I got the ray gun. Come on, man. Come on. Tap it, dude. Tap it. Come on, boys. Come on. Not too long after the ray gun's debut, the Wonderwaf DG2 made its debut, or Wunderwaf if you're an ethnic German. The first bona fide wonder weapon. Yes, the ray gun is a wonder weapon, but as we discussed, it's kind of lackluster in a lot of departments, whereas the Wonderwaf is actually the first wonder weapon to deal infinite damage. The same amount of damage applies on round one as it does 1,000. The ammo with the Wonder Waff is decent enough on World of War to get the job done. Because there are so many glitches you can get to a round that looks like this. But in the later games, the ammo situation would prove to be a little less ideal, but certainly enough to get 
to a relatively high round, I would say. After its debut on Shinonuma, it can be used on Doris and, of course, the giant Call of the Dead by killing George and BO3 Varukt. Of course, compared to what we have nowadays, the Wonder Off doesn't seem like much, but back in the day when this first came out, good god, there wasn't a better feeling than hoarding up a bunch of zombies and chaining them all together with an electrical death sentence. When upgraded, the Wonder Waff DG2 becomes the Wonder Waff DG3 Jay-Z. Not the Brooklyn rapper, damn it. I'm talking about my boy, Jimmy Zielinski. That's actually true, by the way. That's what it stands for. Unfortunately, I'm a big doofus, and I died instantly after upgrading it. If you thought it couldn't get any better than that, well, along came the almighty Black Ops 1 and its launch map, Kino Der Toten. And with that map came a brand new wonder weapon, the best so far, by far, the Thunder Gun. I'm having a difficult time putting into words how magnificent this wonder weapon is, especially for its time, so I won't say anything. <laughs> Although the Thunder Gun doesn't quite have as much ammo as the Wonder Waff, that doesn't matter because unlike the Wonder Waff, the Thunder Gun can take out an entire horde of zombies with one singular shot. It also just so happens to deal infinite damage, and above all else, really what you're getting with this Wonder Weapon is reliability. The Thunder Gun is going to clear any and everything out of your path at any particular moment in time. This is the ultimate save me wonder weapon. That is what sets apart the Thunder Gun from everything else, and the fact that it also doesn't hurt you, unlike the two previous wonder weapons. The Thunder Gun became a fan favorite, and quickly. There was not an argument as to what the best wonder weapon in the game was. It was the Thunder Gun, and it was by a couple miles. You are already realizing why the Ray Gun is considered a secondary. It was simply too good to not put in future maps. After its Kino debut, it would be on Ascension, BO1, and BO3 Knock, Revelations, and Togder Tone. When pack a punched, it becomes the Zeus Cannon. What a fucking name. The Thunder Gun, even to this day, even with time working very much against it, is still one of the best of all time. Oh, I got the Wonder Weapon, let's go! That's it? That's all it does? I'm gonna go drink my sorrows away. A natural follow-up to one of the greats is one of the worst of all time. The Winter's Howl, AKA a stupid fucking ice cube shooter that does nothing. It's not a mystery why it sucks. I mean, you can just watch the gameplay and it doesn't do much beyond keep the zombies in place for a couple of seconds. You don't have a ton of ammo. You can upgrade it and get the Winter's Fury, but it ain't much of a fury. It's more like a disappointment. Oh, and what's that? It appears on literally the most difficult maps in the game. Verrucked and five? What? Look, doing well on these maps in and of itself is a challenge, let alone doing it with this lame-ass excuse for a wonder weapon. Okay, I know it got a little bit better in Classified. It did. It got buffed slightly. But you know what I think? I think too little too late, Treyarch. But evidently, the Winter's Howl was not shitty enough because on Call of the Dead, not too long afterwards, this thing, the VR-11, this headache of a wonder weapon, was released to the public. Before I lift down my pants and take a steamy shit on the VR-11 here, I would like to first give it props for uniqueness, for being unique. You know, it's an interesting concept. You turn a zombie into a person, and it runs around like a decoy. But that's it. That's it. There is an obscure co-op ability that you've probably never even seen or heard of, so it's not even worth mentioning. And it's important for the Easter egg. But I will say, you suck, VR11. Boom roasted. I'm convinced they knew the VR-11 sucked when they put it in the map, and that's why they put in a second Wonder Weapon to compensate for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Scavenger. The Scavenger is a bolt-action explosive sniper rifle. Unique, once again. And to be honest, assuming you're running PhD because you don't want to blow yourself up into a million pieces, it is not bad by any means. It is a one-shot kill until about roughly, you know... Late 30s, early 40s, that's when it begins to drop off. So the Scavenger is significantly better than the VR-11, but is also a very much limited Wonder Weapon. Really, when all things are said and done, the Scavenger is just a means to get to the real Wonder Weapon on the map, which is the Wonder Waff, which you only get for a limited time. So it's a really interesting Wonder Weapon dynamic on Call of the Dead. The Scavenger is in place to make sure that the VR-11 doesn't stink up the place, but then also the Wonder Waff is in place because the Scavenger is so limited, and then the Ray Gun's thrown in there in the mix. It's just a big confusion. Confusing mess. Let's just move on. Take the baby! Take the baby! Take the baby! You know what the 3179JGBT 
to why I have a headache. You know what this gun and I have in common? We're both baby makers. On the real though, the inventor of this gun was probably snorting copious amounts of Gorilla Glue and I can't knock them for trying it. I mean, people generally come up with better ideas when they're high. It is honestly one of my personal favorites. It's just a really interesting and fun Wonder Weapon idea. And on top of that, it happens to be one of the better ones statistically in the game. I mean, this thing, if you use it properly, granted there are risks with it, but if you use it properly, you will get your bang for your buck. And like some of the Call of the Dead Wonder Weapons, this one is exclusive to this map. Shangri-La has a whole lot more value because of this Wonder Weapon. And to round off the spectacular arsenal of Wonder Weapons Black Ops 1 provided, we of course had the Wave Gun on Moon. <laughs> Looks like we'll be having a nuclear dinner tonight! The wave gun alone is in the same ballpark as the thunder gun, but with the addition of the dual wield zap guns, it isn't really close anymore. It's surprisingly underrated. I guarantee you any of you watching this video would have took the thunder gun over this when in reality, this one is even better. And even more importantly, the wave gun doesn't whore itself out like the thunder gun. The wave gun is loyal to moon and moon only. I suppose it's actually the very first dual threat wonder weapon. They're not very common. It's a versatile, reliable powerhouse of a gun. And I'm proud of it. I'm proud of all my Black Ops 1 Wonder Weapons. Hey, what up, guys? It's Mailbox, and today I'm going to show you the absolute best way oh, to get a jet gun in Black Ops. That's hot. I could spend the rest of this video saying very mean things about the jet gun. The fact that it has to be built. The fact that all of the parts to build it are miles apart from each other. The fact that it breaks after just 10 seconds of using. And the fact that you have to grab all of those parts and rebuild it afterwards. It's a terrible gun. But at the same time, it isn't. Because technically, it has infinite damage. Shut up, nerd! The jet gun is not actually a very practical gun to use. Fuck the jet gun, fuck transit collectively. I hated every second of getting this gameplay. Speaking of buildable wonder weapons, at least the Sliquifier is worth it. It is super easy to access. It does not require a 45 minute fucking chore, okay? And you know what else? It has a ton of damage, a ton of ammo, and it was even better before Treyarch patched it. At the very beginning of Dire Eyes, the pre-patched Sliquifier was fucking phenomenal. It was too good. It was literally too good. One shot would end an entire round. And despite being nerfed, it's actually still a great wonder weapon. It's one of the few redeeming qualities of an otherwise very shitty Dire Eyes. There is one major problem, though. Your boy be slipping off the edge. Along came Mob of the Dead, and with it, a revolutionary wonder weapon. Stop fucking attacking my leg. It's my cat, sorry. The Blunder Get was the first of its time. It was the first Wonder Weapon you could upgrade in multiple different ways. So the Blunder Get is a shotgun, but it's no ordinary shotgun. It's practically disintegrating them. You can choose to either straight up pack a punch it and get the sweeper, which is the same thing, but of course amplified. Or if you build the kit, you can build the acid gat, or you can do both and get the vitrolic withering, which is the obvious way to go. By choosing this upgrade path, you've chosen life because in any predicament you get yourself in, you are able to get yourself out of very quickly because when you shoot it, you are distracting all nearby zombies. I really dig the blender gat. It is one of my personal favorites. It's versatile. So versatile, in fact, that they actually made a magic a variant of it on Blood of the Dead. At this point, the ray gun hasn't been relevant in what feels like years now. Nobody's using it anymore, and I think Treyarch finally acknowledged that. Viewers, meet ray gun mark two. Ray gun mark two, meet viewers. A more powerful, more reliable version of the ray gun that doesn't hurt me? I'll sign up. Ooh, but it's three round burst. I'm not sure how aroused I am anymore. I mean, in all reality, it probably took them 10 minutes to figure this idea out. A ray gun, but better. <laughs> But hey, it's, it's a great wonder weapon nonetheless. So great, in fact, that not only did they add it to future maps, but all of the previous Black Ops 2 maps as well. So we're talking Transit and all the Green Run maps, Nuketown, Die Rise. <gasps> Hey, dude, that wasn't even that bad. Mob of the Dead, Origins. Every single Chronicles map knocked, Verruckt, Shino, Kino, Ascension, Shang, Moon. And it even managed to stretch itself out as far into the future as Black Ops 4, being on Blood of the Dead, Classified, Togder Toten, and of course... Alpha Omega. More on that later. We uh, sort of hit the jackpot in Barry. We got the Rega Mark II, but also the Paralyzer. More so than helping you navigate around the map, what's interesting about the Paralyzer is the fact that it doesn't have any ammo at all. Rather, a charge. And as long as you can maintain that charge and not run out, well, you're going to find yourself in a triple digit round with no time. If you were thinking about putting effort in this game, fucking forget it. Stand perfectly still. Don't move. Don't think. Paralyzer. At first, we were taking baby steps, then kid steps, now we're taking big boy adult steps. We had recently just warmed ourselves up to the idea of multiple different upgrade paths with the Blundergat on Mob of the Dead, but with the staves on Origins, they just go balls to the wall. Pick your flavor. Ice, 
lightning, fire, or wind. You do have to grab some parts and build them, which I know sounds like the equivalent of rubbing your dick on sandpaper, but I promise you it's not that bad and it is extremely rewarding. You are not getting a jet gun here. You are getting one of the most highly regarded water weapons in COD Zombies history. And if you choose to go the extra mile and convert your staff into its ultimate form, you will be seeing a triple digit round on your screen fairly quickly, assuming your game doesn't crash. Cough, cough, lightning staff. Of course, all of these staffs are very close in terms of value, but do slightly different things. For example, the ice staff is a lot more ideal for camping and the wind staff is a lot more ideal for training and blasting things out of your way like the thunder gun though yes i think it's a major kick in the balls to have to build all four staves on solo in one game i think that's ridiculous uh, but you probably don't have to but more importantly it's adding replayability value you can hop into a game of origins one day and build one staff and then hop in another day and build a different staff and have an entirely different experience on the same exact map which is something we are seeing for the very first time in origins but it definitely won't be the last. Fist me, daddy! Ah! Boys and girls, welcome to Black Ops 3 and all of the craziness that comes with it. We are, of course, going to start off with good old Shadows of Evil. And I think the best place to start is the good old Fist Me Squid. Though we've had some buildable Wonder Weapons up until this point, there are going to be a lot more going forward. Wonder Weapons over time became less and less mystery box oriented and more and more quest oriented, grabbing parts, completing tasks in order to get them. And the Apothecan Servant isn't any different. You have to grab a couple of parts and craft this bad boy. To say that the Apothecan Servant is the most powerful Wonder Weapon ever is not a stretch. In fact, it's sort of an understatement. It's just facts. I mean, just look at it. You essentially have a black hole gun that just destroys any and everything within a pretty good radius. The one drawback, though, unfortunately, is ammo. And oddly enough, when the game released, you were able to pack a punch it via glitch. That, of course, got patched. I'm sorry if that's a boner deflator, but on the bright side, you can pack a punch it on Revelations. Treyarch, like all of us, really enjoyed the concept of elemental wonder weapons on Origins, and so Der Eisentrack would take heavy inspiration. By feeding three hungry dragons scattered around the map, you now have access to the coolest and the hippest bow in all of Austria, the Wrath of the Ancients. So what are our four choices for the elemental? Elemental upgrades. Well, here's what we're working with. Fire, lightning, wolf, and void. Each of which has its own quest and backstory. Like on Origins with the staves, all of the bows are equal in terms of value, in terms of getting the job done. It's just a matter of how. For example, the wolf bow is great for training. The lightning bow is great for camping. Boy, is it ever. That is my one gripe with the bows. It's the difficulty or rather the lack thereof. Just like the staves, the bows add a ton of replayability value to the map, and it also allows players to acquaint themselves with whatever bow sort of matches them, their personality. Maybe if you have a fiery personality, you pick the fire bow. I don't know. I will keep it 100 with y'all. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Dreisendrac. I have a huge affinity for that map, and therefore the bows. So these are some of my personal favorite wonder weapons. I just have such fond memories using them, quite frankly. The KT-4 is the wonder weapon on Zetsubo. It's kind of like this liquefier's less hazardous cousin. It's not very difficult to build, but it is certainly a bitch to have to upgrade. There's this whole process, you gotta grab shit. It's not fun. Actually, to be honest, I'm not sure if it's that much of a pain in the ass. It's just one more thing to do on a list of very many things to do. It's pretty good, not gonna lie. It's gonna take out all of those Shreks. Hey, when was the last time you thought about the ray gun? The Raygun takes on a third iteration of itself with a completely different set of abilities. This and slows them down, and this and kills them. And if you combine them, you get something special. The idea of having a third different type of Raygun at this point is exhausting. I don't want to think about it. It's not really anything like the Raygun. Before we move off BO3, I think it's important to talk about specialists. Specialists are not very different from Wonder Weapons. The one key difference is that the specialist is very much limited with a recharge. When it comes to effectiveness, most of them are actually just as good as Wonder Weapons, if not possibly better. You can slice your way through a horde with the Apothecan Sword on Shadows of Evil. That was terrible. You can shock the competition with the Ragnarok DG4s on Derizen, Drac, and Revelations. That was even worse. The Skull of Nonsapwa on Setsubo no Shima just blinds people. And this cute little baby dragon, aww. The Gauntlet of Siegfried on Garad Krovi is a really fun one to use as well. Fun fact! I named my lizard after it. Wait, Tim, isn't there another one you may be asking? Well, we don't talk about that one. So what's the point of the specialists? Well, I'm not exactly sure. I guess to add another dynamic to the map, something else to do, another cool wonder weapon provided to you, stop complaining. At least you know you can get it, whereas in the past, you kind of had to rely on RNG. You had to rely on the mystery box to get you what you needed. And that's never a good bet, okay? Unquestionably, it's annoying to have to build all of these wonder weapons, but it's at least going to give you 
some certainty. Until Black Ops 4 came around. Now you spawn in with them. BO4 specialist system is very similar, just all of the hard work has been taken out of it. There are eight different specialists, four per storyline, four chaos, four ether, and they each have three different tiers. Tier one, of course, being the weakest and tier three being the strongest. To upgrade tiers, you simply just have to use the weapon. Not gonna lie, they came up with some pretty cool ideas for these. We start off with the Chakrams of Vengeance. There's also the Scepter of Raw, the Viper and Dragon, and the Hammer of Valhalla. And on the ether side of things, the Hellfire, the Overkill, the Path of Sorrows, and the Ragnarok DG5? This specialist system, while, like I said, is a lot more convenient, I think is a little bit game-breaking. Spawning in with a Wonder Weapon certainly kills game progression. What's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video I'm going to give you a very clear and simple tutorial on how you can get the Elemental Kraken, which is the Despite Voyage of Despair being a highly undesirable map to play, the Kraken wasn't half bad. Like most Wonder Weapons nowadays, there's a way to get it through the box and also by crafting it. You can also get four different elemental upgrades for this. The way it's done is very simple, kids. The Catalyst Zombies come on the floor and you scoop it up and you... You make a nice gun of it. After the squid gun comes the scorpion gun. The death of Orion on 9 is a pretty fun water weapon to use. One of the more unique ones. I enjoy it! You know what I don't enjoy? All this shit you have to do to get this thing upgraded. The best way I can describe the Alistair's Foley to you is sort of a hybrid between the ray gun and the blundergut, if that makes sense. A really small yet versatile weapon. Fun fact, before getting gameplay for this video, I had actually never used the Alistair's Annihilator, the upgraded form. So I used it for the first time and I actually really dig it. Why are we going through BO4 so quickly? Because the less I talk about it, the better for my mental health. Although Ancient Evil is a pretty damned good map, and the four elemental gauntlets are even better. Ancient Evil took a page out of Derizon Track's book, who of course took a page out of Origin's book. There's gonna be plenty of ripping pages out of books because there are a lot more elemental wonder weapons going forward, but Ancient Evil did a pretty good job with it. Complete the quest and you get the best. You get to choose between one of four Greek gods to just wield their power. I mean, <laughs> little old Timothy, huh? Who would've thought? Gaia, Oranos, Karen, and Himera. <laughs> It's now later, we're on Alpha Omega, and there's a Reagan Mark II that needs to be upgraded in four different ways. Creative. This one is like a dual wield machine pistol, and, and this one is like a shotgun, and there's another one that's kind of like a big fire orb. And then there's like a last one that <laughs> has like a, like a stream of electricity. Yeah, I, I just don't know how to describe these. I know there are like letters associated with them, like X, Y, Z, B, I don't give a shit. You feel me? Well, I mean, clearly at this point, we've just done the ray gun too many times. Now we've just got to do the same thing with the thunder gun. If you thought somehow the Wonder Weapons couldn't possibly get less original and less creative, well, <laughs> let me introduce to you the final map of Black Ops 4. An ice thunder gun, which is called the Tundra Gun. It's, that's a cute little disguise name. I know what this- I know what you're up to. Oh, and don't even get me fucking started on that Wonder Waff with a scope on it. Welcome to the end, folks. We are, of course, cutting it all off with Cold War and its brand new Wonder Weapon, the D.I.E. Shockwave. Once again, four different elemental upgrades. Take your pick between Ice, Lightning, Fire, and Poison. And the final Wonder Weapon that catches us up to our exact current moment in time... Another Rega? That's all she wrote, folks. I've got nothing left for you. That's the end. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. Check out everything in the description. It is all important. Please do let me know if I missed one in the comment section. I'm sure you've already done it or are doing it at this exact moment in time. And no, I did not forget about wonder gadgets, okay? You know those lethals and tacticals like monkey bombs, the Hell's Retriever, etc.? I didn't forget about them. They're just not guns, so I didn't think they mattered. I don't know. A tier list will surely follow this video. Stay tuned for that. And with that all out of the way, guys, I love you. Take care. <laughs>